This week should be pretty busy in the tech space as news from Mobile World Congress starts to become available. But of course, Google was not going to sit this one out as they just announced nine new Android features that should be coming out very soon, if not live already. From what we know, Gemini is getting a small expansion into Google Messages, we have some new AI-powered accessibility features, and Wear OS also got some new additions, all of which we're going to cover in this video. Let's start this coverage off right away with the most most exciting news to me, which is the ability to chat with Gemini inside Google Messages. Originally, this was on 9to5Google's radar in late January, and starting this week, users opted into the Google Messages beta will be able to start testing out the feature. From what we know so far, Gemini will have its own dedicated thread inside the messaging app, it will be powered by Gemini 1.0 Pro, and will have their responses tailored more for mobile devices. On top of that, we will see continued support for extensions like Gmail, Drive, Docs, and YouTube. Image generation will also be supported and you will have the ability to upload your own images as well. In terms of privacy, Gemini in Google Messages will be a one-to-one -one conversation between you and the language model, so there's not any group chat integration and there is no end-to-end -end encryption. Same with the web version, chat history can be saved between three, 18, or 36 month periods with an option to turn off history completely, which will then store data up to 72 hours. Personally, I've been using Gemini on a daily basis for months now, so naturally I'm pretty excited to try the feature out, and I am enrolled in the Google Messages beta as well, so if you guys want to deep dive into the feature, leave a comment and let me know. Google also announced a small but powerful update to Android Auto with the integration of AI message summaries. This was originally announced back with the launch of the S24 series, so this is more of a reminder than anything else. You can enable this feature by going into your Android Auto settings and turning on a new toggle called Play AI Message Summaries, or by accepting an automated prompt whenever you get the offer. At least for now, AI summaries will trigger when getting one singular message over 40 words or multiple messages from the same thread, including group chats. There will also be options for relevant replies based on the contents of those messages, like giving your ETA, for example. Switching over to large screen devices, we did get a new feature for Google Docs with handwritten annotations. I can see this being really useful on foldables or tablets, especially those with stylus support, and if you want to enable the feature, you should be able to access it by selecting the new stylus icon in the toolbar. When enabled, you will see a new floating menu with options to adjust the stroke width, color, and access to the highlighter or eraser tools. If you don't have a stylus or S Pen enabled device, don't worry as the feature will allow users to write annotations with their finger as well. Thankfully, as part of these nine features, Google announced some critical quality of life updates with a big one being the addition of Spotify Connect support for Android's media switcher. This was originally announced in early 2023 as part of Google's initiative to make media switching a more seamless experience, with YouTube Music being the first to officially support the function. Another small quality of life update announced today is in regards to Health Connect. This was introduced in Android 14 as a way to curate all of your fitness stats amongst various health apps into one easy to access place. And today, Google is taking a small step forward by adding that Health Connect data into the Fitbit app, which in hindsight is a very practical addition. I use my Fitbit app on a daily basis to check my Pixel Watch stats, so naturally it would make sense to see all of my records in the same app. When live, there should be a new Records tab in the You section of the app where you can access the data from Health Connect compatible apps like All Trails, or a Ring, My Fitness Pal, and many more. Google also announced two new-ish Wear OS features that should help make the devices feel more useful. One of them is the ability to access gym memberships, loyalty cards, or boarding passes via Google Google Wallet on Wear OS 3.5 devices and up. This one kind of caught me off guard because we just reported on this in December of 2023 and I've been using it for a while now, so this seems more like Google is reiterating that feature. But we did get something new with the addition of public transit directions. Previously, Wear OS devices could only get driving, cycling, and walking directions, but soon you'll be able to access bus, ferry, and train routes via Google Maps right from your wrist. Last but not least, we do have some truly helpful features when it comes to accessibility. First is a genuinely useful update for those in low vision communities with the addition of AI-generated captions. This 
feature will be integrated into Google's Lookout Accessibility app and will now have the added functionality of giving AI generated descriptions when looking at photos, online images, and pictures sent to you in the Messages application. In my opinion, probably one of the more useful implementations of AI and I hope we see more helpful use cases like this in the future. And finally, Google did reveal upgrades to the TalkBack screen reader option for Google Lens. You can find this function inside the Maps application specifically where users will now be able to point their camera at a surrounding business or location to have their hours, ratings, or directions read out loud to you. Before we get out of here, I did want to bring up an honorable mention and while it's technically not a feature, I'm sure many Android enthusiasts would like to be in the know. To celebrate Mobile World Congress 2024, Google released a build your own robot tool where you can create your own custom avatar. If you've been a fan of Android for a long time now like me, you probably remember a similar tool released back in 2011 called Androidify. Nowadays it's updated with a wide selection of materials, outfits, and accessories, so if you want to make your own, I'll leave a link in the description. I highly recommend it. And guys, I know this was a lot, but these are all the new features Google announced at Mobile World Congress. 2024. For the most part, these are practical quality of life additions more than anything else, but as an Android enthusiast, I always welcome changes that are genuinely useful, so I hope you're all able to take advantage of them. With that said, guys, let me know what you think of these new features. Is Google going in the right direction with this, and if not, what additions are you hoping to see moving into 2024? Leave a comment and let me know, but in the meantime, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.